Krina Media's Mining Weekly is speaking to Professor Musa Manzi about his latest NSTF South 32 award. Professor Manzi is the director of the Seismic Research Center of the School of Geosciences of the University of the Waters Rand. Professor Manzi, with the help of your research and the research of your team, how can South Africa make exploration cheaper and more environmentally friendly? The whole idea about the Seismic Research Center is to actually develop innovative, um, environmentally friendly and cost-effective tools. So particularly in the area of reflection seismology, because reflection seismology is one of the most accurate geophysical method to map the subsurface of the earth, but most importantly to locate the old deposit, we talk about your gold and platinum um, bearing horizons at depth all the way to about 4.5 kilometers. And that's not easy. So I will start with the cost effective manner. So what we've done is traditionally, so what you do is when you acquire seismic data set, you have to have an active source. So we often induce energy using these big trucks on surface. So generally a method is surface based, which means that you induce energy using these big trucks and you've got sensors which are cabled on surface. So what you do is the energy will propagate through the rocks in the form of seismic waves all the way to a depth of about 4.5 kilometers where your gold bearing horizon might be allocated. And then these waves will bounce back to the surface and then will be detected by these cable sensors. So what happens then is that you've got to analyze um, the time these waves took to go down and come back on these sensors and get a picture of the subsurface of the air. So it gives you a structural architecture of your mining environment. So now the issue is these vaporized trucks are not available in South Africa. They are very, very expensive. And most companies don't do seismic surveys because of the, of the budget. And also a lot of cost comes from the fact that it takes at least two to about three days to lay out the cable sensors on surface. And the other third point is that it's not always possible to put sensors on surface because of the mine infrastructure. So those issues completely eliminate the possibility of doing accurate seismic surveys for exploration. So now this is where myself and my team came in. How can we then ensure that we continue mapping the subsurface of the earth, mapping the old bodies in a cheaper way? So what we've done is we've worked with our partners to develop the wireless sensors, which means that you actually do not have to connect the cables. You place these sensors on surface first. So what you do is you lay them out. The beauty about these sensors is that they can continue to record continuously up to about 52 days. And so now what happens is then you can be able to monitor them in time, which means that you eliminate a, a big number in the field because you don't need a lot of people. But also what we do is we don't use an active source. We use the ambient noise. So what we do is as the mine is blasting, also we're saying it's cost effective because the mine will not stop the production to do exploration. So the mine will continue blasting, the mine will continue crushing the rock. So we use that energy as a source of energy, which we call now the passive method. So we analyze the ambient noise and then we get the subsurface image of the mine. So then we're able to locate the geological structures that compartmentalize your old body underground. Also, we are able to map the old bodies ahead of the face, which is critical for the mine. In that way, you can use these wireless sensors in the environments that has no access. For example, when there's infrastructure, you can still put your sensors between the buildings. Wireless, if they are cabled, you cannot put your trucks in between the buildings. Also, you cannot put the cable sensors in between the buildings. In some of the cases, you find that your areas are mountainous. You cannot really get, you cannot really drive there. But what you can actually do is you can actually then place these sensors on the mountainous areas 
And then all you need is that traffic noise, anything that's passing by that generating noise, then we capture that thing as an ambient noise, then we analyze the wave third, then we then analyze the subsurface of the mine, then we can assist the mine in identifying the old bodies, as well as identifying the structures that may be prone to mine seismicity and rock based. How can your system's early warnings of seismic risk help to make mining safer? Yeah, so that's a very good point. So what happens is, um, remember now, one of the issues is that with these wireless sensors, we can use them in what we call a GPS denied environment. So a GPS denied environment, we're talking about inside the mine tunnel. So now, geophysically, how sensitive your method is, it depends on the depth. So the further you are where you are from the target depth, the less resolution you get. So what we're saying here now, if we bring these sensors to the mining tunnels, areas that are known to have no GPS signal, so what we're developing is actually what we call a GPS time system, whereby you can synchronize these this wireless sensors inside the tunnel with those that are on surface. We know in South Africa, we're mining very deep at depth of about 3.5 kilometers sometimes. And then the mines are actually uh, prone. The miners are exposed to mine, mining induced seismicity. So what happens as they mine, some of the structures can get reactivated and cause earthquakes. So how does this method now uh, work? So what we're saying is, by having these sensors closer to those structures, we'll be able to map the structures ahead of the mine. So if there are structures that are seismically active, we'll be able to provide some information to the mines and say, in this particular area, you've got structures that are dipping this way, that, that are connected this way, and also orientating this way. So which means that the mine can improve their mining methodology as well as their drilling program based on that and therefore mitigates the risk that are associated with mining. Mines also are not just facing the mining induced seismicity, they also face, they're facing a methane explosion. So in some of the cases you find out the methane together with water travel along these structures in the mine. So this system we're able to map all the fracture, we can map the fracture network and then correlate those fracture network with the migration of the fluid underground. So we'll be able to tell that these are the structures that are prone to fluid and methane migration. Because if we can identify those structures ahead of the mine, we can probably then identify the reservoir for that gas as well as for the water. And then the mine can actually easily plan their dewatering strategies as well as mitigate and plan their ventilation systems much better to mitigate the risk associated with methane explosion. The other information we get from this innovation is that you can get the velocity model of the mine because remember, we've got sensors on surface. We also have sensors inside the mine tunnel, which means that we can actually map the rock mass between surface and the tunnel, which, is not, which was not possible with the conventional method. So what you do is, you get the velocity model to actually accurately locate the seismic events in the mine. Because one of the issues that when there's issues like earthquakes, you find that the locations are not accurate for those events because of, of a poor velocity model. So in this case, we'll provide some information that will be used by the mine rock engineers to better locate seismic events in the mine and therefore protect miners. So as you can notice, we cover two things. We discover all bodies, but at the same time, we protect miners. And can South Africa get going immediately by placing these wireless sensors on surface? We've actually been doing this work uh, since last year, last year, December. So we, we're collaborating with Advanced Opody Knowledge Program under SAMEGI, which is run by Mining Precinct. And of course, we've got also a lot of international collaborators. So last year, December, we used this system for the, probably for the first time in South Africa, where, whereby we went to um, a survey mine in the Platinum Mine. We accessed the tunnel, we put these sensors, and then we also collaborating with the Council for Geosciences um, Council for Geosciences, they are drilling for this potential shell gas in the Karoo Beaufort West in June this year. 
um, my vet university colleagues, my students, as well as other team members, we went down to Pier 4. We actually placed these sensors to map down to about 2.5 kilometers. So the system and our approach is, uh, um, is available right now. So we're doing multiple tests. But I can say I need to emphasize that we are not trying to replace active seismics because they all come with advantages and disadvantages. So I've already, I've already highlighted advantages of having passive seismic as one of the approaches because you actually can do it almost anywhere and you don't have to have the expensive sources to generate energy for you. And they can work inside the mine tunnels. You can actually design some of the sensors to put in exploration holes, which means that actually you can do what we call tunnel, surface, borehole, seismic imaging, which means that we get high resolution imaging of the subsurface. So the method has been tested. We're currently analyzing the results. As I'm talking to you right now, I've got a bunch of students in the corridor actually preparing these sensors for another project in the platinum mine. Of course, I won't mention the name right now because of confidentiality. But we, wow. we've, we've received some good acceptance from a series of uh, mining companies in South Africa. So we're testing the technology. But we do say if uh, some people haven't heard about what we're doing in our approach, um, of course, we contact him or we can, we can have a chat and generate and, and create some of the potential research project around this area. That was Creamer Media's Mining Weekly, speaking to Professor Musa Manzi. Professor Manzi is a director of the Seismic Research Center of the School of Geosciences of the University of the Witwatersrand.